All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, welcome to uh, another uh, webinar that many of you are probably uh, getting tired of, uh, but we do have some exciting uh, new information about uh, digital dentures, which is the subject today. Uh, on behalf of uh, Amon Gerbach and Vita North America, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone. Today's webinar is going to be um, recorded as well. And all of your uh, phones right now are on mute. So if you do have any questions, there is a question box in your, uh, your pop-up uh, go to webinar uh, panel and just type in your questions, send those out, and then we will, in the during the program or at the end for sure, we will get to your questions and, and answer those. Your program, again, is going to be recorded, and it will be available through either the Vita North American website or Amon Gerbach website. Uh, Amon Gerbach has a, uh, a YouTube uh, Amon Gerbach uh, channel that you can go visit and um, and you can uh, pick up on any of these uh, tidbits and the information and the pearls of wisdom uh, today um, by reviewing that uh, those webinars uh, recorded um, on these channels. Uh, Today's uh, webinar will be pr uh, provided by um, Maurice Whitlock, uh, he goes by Mo, uh, by, uh, from Amon Gerbach. Uh, Mo is a, uh, a product specialist, a technical trainer with Amon Gerbach. He's got 25 years of ex uh, experience in dental technology. Uh, he's been in the Air Force or was in the Air Force 21 years as a lab technician. Uh, he's an experienced uh, lab manager, trainer, and the last 10 years specialized in CAD, uh, CAD CAM technology, and is well versed in uh, many of the CAD CAM systems as well. He received his uh, associate's degree in dental laboratory technology through the Air Force, uh, the community college of the Air Force. He also has a, uh, um, an associate's degree as well in medical science. Uh, Paul, which is from uh, Vita North America, uh, Paul received his CDT in dentures removals 10 years ago. He currently works for Vita North America as a product specialist. He ex has extensive knowledge and experience in the CAD CAM technologies. He worked with Loma Linda University alongside pre and post doctorate students and has a vast uh, clinical experience in producing aesthetic quality restorations. Uh, Paul has helped uh, introduce uh, a server-based education platform uh, of intraoral scanning and designing into the Loma Linda Universities um, to fabricate, fix, and remove old prosthetics. So just a reminder, uh, we will have you all on mute until, we're, um, until this concludes. Uh, at the end of the program, uh, we will do a question and answer session. So please uh, type in your questions in the panel under the questions box, and we will address those uh, uh, your questions as we get through. Again, this uh, webinar will be recorded, and you'll have an opportunity to get the um, recording as a link uh, from the Vita North American Education um, department. If you're interested in CE, this will be an hour of CE, continuing education through NBC. After the webinar, each one of you that have registered, you will receive an email with a link that will direct you on how to uh, go ahead and collect that the CE, uh, hour of CE. I'm going to now turn it over to, um, to Paul and Paul, you are, uh, I believe you should be on now. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys, and uh, thank you, Jim, for the introduction. Uh, thanks, Mo, for being here uh, with us also. Um, so what, what I'm going to start with here is um, give you guys kind of a, a brief overview of what we're going to be talking about today, um, and that is the, the Vita Vionic workflow 
uh, with the Amund Gerbach full denture system. And so this is kind of a brief uh, o overview of the of the workflow, and we'll kind of talk about all the pieces of this. Um, uh, there's the the scanning and designing, which uh, Mo is going to go over in a little bit, and then the manufacturing of the try-in, uh, the wax bases, the milling of the teeth, uh, the denture base, and then the final finishing. And we'll talk about all of those pieces. And we'll give you guys kind of a, a, a hands-on demo of as much of that as we can. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about, though, is the teeth themselves, okay? Because this kind of revolves around, you know, the teeth and our avail ability to incorporate them into a digital workflow. So, you know, what is different with uh, these teeth than your standard, you know, carded teeth? And... Um, the biggest thing you'll probably notice is, you know, the, the neck of the teeth um, has been changed uh, a little bit, and I'll, I will show you exactly why that is. Uh, the teeth that we're using, the, the, the Vionic teeth in the, in the DD frames or our Vigo teeth are based on our VitaPan Excel, which is our, our premium tooth line. So they've got, uh, you know, a lot of the, the characteristics uh, present with that, um, you know. Some of the things that make it different is we kind of went in and we redesigned the tooth, again, to work with a digital workflow. So what does that mean? Well, you know, your standard carded tooth has a very long neck. Um, you know, they they usually have undercuts and that kind of a thing. And with a, a digital workflow, we needed to be able to, to insert these teeth into a base without any kind of interference. So uh, you can kind of see what we cut away and what we changed when we when we uh, redevelop these teeth. Um, now, the, the cool thing about this, though, is, and what kind of separates it from some of the other um, ways that it's done in the industry, is that, you know, it's not milled out of a Puma Maypock and it's not printed. These are an actual denture tooth. So you're going to get all of the, the features and benefits that you would in a standard denture tooth, which is, you know, the aesthetics, the surface texture, uh, you know, the you know, the nice uh, shape and the, the fluorescence and opalescence built into it. Um, also, these teeth are, again, they're, they're built like denture teeth. They're built very hard, so they have a very, uh, you know, they're hard, very low abrasion rate, very good wear resistance, uh, longevity, uh, which you're not going to get out of just a milled or printed PMMA tooth. And the other thing that we took uh, quite a bit of time with uh, when we designed this library uh, to get it into the software was this occlusal setup. Because, you know, as we approach this digital process, we want to be able to, you know, accommodate and, uh, uh, you know, have solutions for all of our uh, denture setups. We don't want to have to do some of them digital, some of them analog. We want to include everything that we can. And so uh, when we designed our libraries, when they come into the software, they come in in perfect occlusion, in a, in a buccalized, a lingualized, crossbite, or whatever. And because we have, um, you know, the selection, the combination, you've got more than 600 different setups that you can do. So we should be able to cover any kind of case that's out there. Uh, so this is a, a big advantage of our library uh, in the software. Now here are some of the components of the system. Uh, we've got our Vionic bond, which is which is what we use to bond the teeth into the base. We've got our digital teeth, um, and then uh, for finishing and characterization, we've got our VMLC flow, which is our light curing composite. So what does that kind of look like? And um, you know, again, I'll, I'll give you kind of a, a, a brief uh, overview here in the slides, and then we'll uh, get into showing you what it looks like on the bench. Uh, so milling the base, um, you know, that that it comes out really smooth, very accurate. Um, it it only takes about uh, 90 minutes or so to uh, to mill the, that that base, or if you're printing the base, and I'll let Mo speak to that. Um, when uh, uh, when he comes up about uh, those different options and what Almond Gerbach has available. 
Uh, here's some information on the on the bionic base that we're milling out of. I'll let you guys take a look at that, but we can get you that later if you need all of those specs. And then for the the DD frame feed um, that you can see, we can adapt the the bottom part of that tooth to um, our specific needs. That that the Vigo teeth. Like I showed earlier in the slide, we've removed quite a bit of it to make it, um, you know, applicable for the digital manufacturing and digital technology. And what the DB frame teeth allows us to do essentially is to is to mill a custom set of Vigo teeth, if you will. And you know, for certain applications, if you're if you're uh, got a case that has limited occlusal space, or you're doing an immediate where you've got uh, uneven tissue because of, uh, you know, extractions or something like that, we can adapt that tooth for those specific needs. So kind of between those two workflows, the DD frame and the Vigo, um, you know, Almond Gerbach really has the most ideal and versatile setups because uh, it'll give you the best of both worlds depending on what your needs are. Um, now, the other part of this is our vionic bond, which is what we use to, to uh, glue, if you will, these teeth into uh, the base. And one of the big advantages of this is that uh, some of the other manufacturers out there are using a, an uncured resin uh, to, to bond the teeth into the base. But because that uncured resin is so thick or so viscous, um, they're, they're requiring like 150 to 170 micron gap. And unfortunately, that tends to lead to a lot of movement in the teeth. And really, one of the big advantages of being able to do this digitally is, is if you remember talking about those occlusal setups, they come in in perfect occlusion. And if we can't translate that precision of the digital technology to our final prosthesis, then we're really missing out on a huge benefit of this. So uh, with our bond is very uh, has a very low viscosity, almost like water, which means we're able to uh, design these teeth with a 20 micron gap, which means that they fit very snugly, very uh, you know uh, exactly where they should. There's no movement, there's no ambiguity, and it, it means that we're able to, like I said, translate that precision of the digital technology to that final prosthesis. And um, the Vionic Bond, it's, a, it's an autopolymerizing resin. Uh, if you put it into the pressure pot, it will cure in 15 minutes. Or if you forget or you leave it out on your bench, it will fully cure within 20, uh, 12 hours. So uh, that's, it's, it's very easy to use and it works very, very well. Uh, we also have our VMLC, which is our light cure composite, which you can go in, uh, you can uh, use to finish or fill any micro gaps, um, or you can use like the, the clear, the window that we have to fill in in the interproximal between the teeth uh, so that your patients don't have to floss the denture or something like that. I'll show you guys some examples when we get to that uh, a little later on. And uh, the VMLC comes, again, in window, which is clear, or we've got our five gingiva colors, and we even got a paint kit, too, depending on how, uh, you know, aesthetic or, you know, you want to get in, in creating these dentures. And so what does the portfolio look like? Okay, so here are some uh, slides on the teeth specifically. So the, the Vigo teeth, and these are... Uh, what we consider our carded teeth. These are the pre-manufactured ones. They come in a blister pack, which is, uh, and the teeth are pre-sandblasted and cleaned, ready to be glued in right out of the package. Um, they come in our uh, classical sh shades, A1, A2-ish, uh, uh, or and on, and um, uh, and a, a bleach color in OM1. Uh, again, they are based on our VitaPan Excel and Lingoform molds, so if you've already used them, then you should be very familiar with what they look like. Uh, we've got eight uh, upper anterior molds, four lower anteriors, and four posterior molds in the Vigo. 
and in the in the DD frames, essentially it's the same selection. They're they're based on our Excel and Lingo forms. We have the classic beta shades, the up eight upper anterior shades, the four lower anteriors, and four, four posterior shades. Uh, the biggest difference is that uh, these are suspended in a wax um, card, which makes them uh, gives them the ability to be uh, milled or, or yeah to be milled in the the, the milling unit itself. Um, so to give you guys kind of an idea on pricing, this is our retail pricing for the teeth uh, and the and the bond. Now of course, uh, depending on your lab, uh, you know your pricing could be a little bit better. That's something that you're going to have to talk to your your local sales rep or dealer to find out what your exact pricing is. But this is uh, the retail pricing just to give you guys kind of an idea. Um, and then also for our uh, our VMLC and our light cure stuff, um, this is again the MSRP pricing. Uh, you'd have to check with your dealer or your local rep to figure out exactly what your pricing is going to be. But this will at least give you an idea. Also, some of this stuff comes together. You can see here at the bottom as a kit uh, with you know several different colors, or the gingiva kit, which comes with uh, all five gingival colors and a window and a couple other things that I can't remember. Um, and that kind of leads us into the digital design piece of this. So this is where I'm going to turn it over to. Yes. Yeah, uh, you got a quick question on your side before we go uh, turn it over to uh, to Mo. Uh, Mr. Lee has a question. After the teeth are bonded. Can you skip the sealer if you are going to overlay with pink uh, characterizations? Uh, yeah. So the you know the the VMLC or the light cure is a, an optional step. It's certainly recommended, but it's it's not necessary. That if you know you were doing something like an immediate denture, which is uh, only going to be in for a short amount of time, probably I would. Uh, do the denture base, glue the teeth in, and send it right out without putting too much more effort into it. Um, but you know the option is certainly available. You can you can add it in any way that works best for your needs. You can add the the window between the interproximals. You can add the gingiva around the teeth, or if you're going to uh, characterize it with all kinds of composite on the gingiva to make it really uh, you know more aesthetic. Uh, you can do that as well. Kind of any combination of that, whatever works best for your uh, your needs or your patient. Uh, and then uh, we have one other question from Rick. Um, are the CAD CAM milling denture teeth, so the Vionic uh, uh, FDS Cardi teeth, teeth? Mm -hmm. are they this, are they interchangeable with the uh, the Vigo? Are they the same? Uh, the, the, the tooth shape is the same, but the uh, the neck or the base where it goes into the denture base is going to be different depending on uh, on how you design it. That because it's being milled on that that bottom surface, um, it is going to essentially custom make that bottom surface specific to each denture. So um, if you milled a set of DD frame teeth and you lost it before you were able to glue it in, you couldn't just glue in a Vigo teeth because that bottom part would be slightly different depending on how it was designed in the software, if that makes sense. Yes. All right, fantastic. Uh, so we'll turn it over to um, Maurice uh, now. And Mo, if you want to uh, bring up your screen, there we go. We're good. Okay. Uh, thank you. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Um, can you guys see the screen with the dentures? Okay. Is that is that what's showing? I just want to make sure we're um, everybody yeah, seeing. Good. All right. Awesome. Uh, thank you for joining us today, um, Jim. I want to thank you for that introduction and uh, Paul for that great information. What what I wanted to do today is kind of tie in. Uh, what Paul started 
um, showing the process. Uh, if you guys have seen this video, we've done one before with Vita. We partnered earlier a couple months ago, and I really went into depth of the design. So I kind of want to I want to want to piggyback on that and go a little further and show the cam, and then we're going to tie it into completing the the full denture. Um, <clears throat> and just to answer a little bit on that question, that last question we had, uh, if you look on the side here on our tooth placement. Um, Kind of what Paul was mentioning, I'm going to show you guys two different ways that we, the two different ways, the Vigo as well as the Vionic, and show you the differences. Um, I really want to go into, we, we have so many different ways that we can do this, so I'm going to use the Vigo to do the full denture, uh, and then on the Vionic, we're going to do a single arch, because I know that's what a lot of our customers are waiting on, so we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to show that today as well. Uh, first thing here you'll see is our, we have the uh, tooth placement. So the model, model analysis has already been set up, um, but I wanted to show you guys, if I turn this, you can see what Paul was talking about earlier. These are a lot, uh, the necks are a lot shorter. And the reason for that is for the Vigo teeth, they're, the machine, the mill is not gonna be adjusting this. You're taking this right out of the package to bond. So essentially we needed this room. So if you guys notice, I have plenty of room between the bottom of the teeth and the arch to give my room, give myself room for the base of the denture. Um, with that, and with that being said, I can also go in and select uh, different sizes according to the space or the room I have. Um, and and immediately I can once I change that, I just set, I'll select place anteriors or place posteriors, whatever I want to change, and um, it'll it'll appear right there. So that's kind of one of the ways we speed up digital from analog is if I change my mind <clears throat> and when I'm waxing up a denture, I'm re reheating, moving stuff out of the way, and here with the click of a button, I get get the um, I get the next library. So here's a general setup. There's some minor things we're gonna do. Um, and, and one of the big differences, so for Vigo, you, you guys have to remember, there's no mill that's going to be adjusting this. So it's really important um, that you take a few extra steps to uh, make this exactly, you know, make it where you want. You can still adjust once you're done. But um, when, I, when I move over to the uh, Vionic version, I want to show you something really cool in the software and the, and the partnership that uh, Amon Gerbach and Vita has made. So, so we'll go next. So these are the teeth I selected. Um, I can look over here and see, you know, and change the art, change the size. Um, but just like the cooking show, I prepared something that kind of fits. But you, you, it's funny when you, when you, when I do this, you can see where sometimes a computer will guess, or the computer will put what it thinks, and it shows that you still need that technical knowledge that we haven't been replaced completely yet. So um, we'll move forward. And the next step is going to be um, where I get to move the teeth. It'll be it'll be another another step from uh, tooth placement. And now, if you notice, all these lines here uh, was the model analysis. So if you wanted to see that step, there's a there's a video, uh, like I said earlier, that we, uh, um, AG and Vita had made to show that process. But we wanted to be able to show a little more and go a little deeper. So so if you notice here, my midline's off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just move that slightly. Okay, that's pretty good. So you notice there's a little I have some I have some interferences here, so I'm going to go to simple and just move that tooth. There we go. Let's go over here. Like so. so I have one small area that I need to adjust. Now I can digitally try to maneuver this and clear that space. Uh, and move. let's say I move this over a little bit. And as long as I don't see any marks, I won't have any adjustments. There, there won't be any adjustments. If you do, if there's something, if you really wanted that set up and didn't want to change it, you can take a screenshot and instead of um, 
uh, disclosing tape we, we have right here. We have a mark exactly where you need to adjust and you can, uh, you can proceed with the bond. So we'll make a few movements here and we'll go next. And now is where it's gonna block out the the um, the base. Uh, if you have these, if you have if you have patients with just absolutely no undercuts whatsoever, you can actually freeform this to create uh, some undercut. But for now, we're just gonna go next. And this takes a little bit um, to to actually block out. Uh, dig digitally, you know, it takes a, it's a couple minutes. Uh, I still, I compare this to analog where we're surveying the model, where we're putting block out wax, removing excess block out wax, pouring up a model, another model for a true block out model. Um, we're talking a couple minutes digitally where it's a couple of, you know, hours, um, you know, in a traditional sense. So actually, no. we have... If we have any questions right now, this would be a good time. Yep. Yeah, Mo, uh, there was a question by Rhea. Uh, on the case, on the example of the case that had the Vigo uh, denture teeth, yep. do you recall what, uh, or can you bring back what mold that was uh, that was selected for that case? Um, yes. Let me, let me cap. Well, actually, yeah, we'll go back. I'll Because even on here, I can go to the teeth. And right click on it. Well, it's right in the middle of. Let me let me let it Thank finish you. working. There we go. Because this block, it's still in the upper and lower. So if I if I go here, see where it says library model, I hit that, and that tells me that was the Vionic Vigo 043. Great. Thanks. Yep. And now it's highlighted. We'll skip that. <laughs> and that's the same thing on all of these. And then if I scroll down here, um, <clears throat> any of these individual teeth, it'll tell me which one I selected. Uh, any any questions right now too? This is a good time. Like I said, it's, it's building that base um, blocking out model. So it takes a couple of minutes, but if, if, if we have any further questions right now, this is a good time that we can, we can take yeah, care so of um, Mo, what uh, what would be the uh, consideration for a customer if they were interested in the uh, on the Gerbox system and and the, the Bionic technologies? Uh, what would they need? So you would, you would need um, a scanner. And, um, a, you know, our, our, we have our Map 600, so we provide the full solution all the way through. But we've also had customers that already have a scanner. So we've we've we we don't leave them out. We we they just join us at the design stage. Um, I always tell customers that ask me that as long as they can produce um, this, as long as the scanner they have. Uh, I think the computer's mad at me because I'm trying to. It's trying to. It's trying to think while I'm moving it around, but that's okay. Um, if if their scanner can produce this and give us some type of aesthetic plate. Whether that be base plate and occlusal rims or previous dentures that we're replacing, um, we can import that in. So we get that into that stage, we then proceed forward uh, with our design software. Uh, what's and what's kind of unique about our scanner is that um, you you can place the entire articulator on our platform. So the hardest part of of other scanners trying to do dentures is getting this space here. I think there's a little delay. So, so this getting so this with that, our, hmm? with that articulation, um, it's possible also to bring into your system some digital data as well as uh, uh, condyle function degrees of uh, and things like that. Yes. Yeah. So with our virtual articulator. Um, and that when we do the single arch, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that as well. So we'll use in our and it's um, we can take the analog articulator, scan that in, bring it in as an as a virtual, and then um, utilize those functional movements exactly. So I'm gonna show that on the next uh, case that we do. 
Okay, so now the next step here, I'm just gonna we're just gonna follow the wizard. Is uh, you're gonna design the denture base bottom, so that's just our outline, and this is exactly how you you know how you want to draw that at, at uh, how your design is. Some people want to fill that entire vestibule. Okay. And um, just to continue on what we were, we were talking about earlier. So you, you have your scanner, we have our design, um, we have our libraries, our tooth libraries, you know, partner with, with Vita. And then we have our mill, which uh, if we're doing Vionic, um, there's some really, really cool features that we can do as far as adjusting the teeth for us. So for those of you that are making dentures, you know it's a pain to grind that wax, get that wax off the denture. Uh, the denture teeth uh, when you're reducing the basal surfaces. Um, our mill and our system, are actually our workflow, will reduce the basal surfaces. And now with our latest update, it'll actually re um, adjust the occlusal surfaces as well. So you can, if you have a wear facet, um, you know, or, or somebody who was grinding and, and you want to have some type of function, we can grind that in instead of you having to do that by hand and, and using a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of tape to uh to show that we click a button and it makes all those adjustments so I'll, I'll be showing that in the next uh the next step so then with the mill uh we can process everything uh, we give our customers the option to mill a try-in like paul showed earlier you can print a try-in you can print a base you can mill a base Basically, what we want to do is give you the tools and you you use it the best way that fits your uh, lab. You, we, you know, we, we, we don't tell them this is the way you make a denture. We say here are the ways in our system that you can make a denture. Almost done here. Because you, I mean, really, the, the, the quest, the main question I get is, Customers are trying to decide on whether they want to mill or print, um, and I and I and I always ask them. To me, it's what result do you want? Because um, milled or printed teeth cannot compete aesthetically with manufactured teeth. You know that the the the, the Vita teeth are beautiful teeth, and um, you just can't beat that with a monoblock resin. Okay, let's do the lower, make this border. I didn't drink too much coffee. I did this part on purpose. So you can go ahead and make your adjustments here. If you don't like the design, I'll look around, that looks pretty good. Let's bring this up. All right, we'll apply. So again, this is the Vigo T. Um, so I, I when I when I train people, when I train people on this, I tell them, okay, there's anything you you really want this design as far as the placement exactly where you want it. You know what I mean? There's there's be, because with digital, you know, the, the 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 more we can let the machine and the software um, set everything up using using our knowledge, um, the less finishing at the end we have to do. And so that's why I really pay attention to um, contacts, the function, the positioning. Um, now, when we get into here in the next step, when we get into some designing uh, or festooning our base. That is where um, it's the comfort level of design. So I'm going to show a couple couple tips and tricks on designing the denture base um, or characterizing the denture base. Because there's really this, there's two real trains of thought. You either leave it smooth and add the, for example, VMLC material, um, or you have you have some customers that'll they'll design everything digitally and just basically polish at the end and um, have a monochromatic 
uh, pink base. So I'll do half um, and then show you what it looks like when it's smooth. Any other, any questions during this time? Uh, when, when you do get to the single arch, uh, Mo, um, mm -hmm. there's a couple questions about the, um, you know, transferring of the job relationships, uh, things like that, um, okay. and, and whether or not a Facebook can use and stuff like that. So, All right. Yep. We're almost finished. It's almost complete. Okay. So now, um, All right, our base is complete. It gives us one more chance to make adjustments, but that's fine. We're gonna go with that. So here's where you can spend some time. Okay, so I'm gonna do half. And then I'll, I'll show you how we leave the other half if we're going to do characterization afterwards. So over here, we have our freeforming tool. And I'm just going to go over here and kind of flatten this out. Because really, I want to leave that canvas uh, flexible to be able to create those root eminences. So if it's already there, that's not giving me the room I want. So I flatten that off there, flatten this. And then I'll actually do some work over here. So there's a couple things. One of the tricks, and this is just how I do it. You know, there, there's people find a lot of different ways. Um, all I ask is if you find a really cool way, you, 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 you email me and show me how to do it, so <laughs> I can I can add it. So in the posterior, what I what I like to do is we'll go here. I do sort of a little V with the cylinder. It looks a little weird at first. And then so I'll go along here, then I'll follow kind of the axis of the root of that tooth. I'll do two or three right down the axis and then add a little bit towards each side. Right now, there's probably some people looking looking at me pretty strange at the screen, but I promise once we smooth it out, it'll look pretty decent. At least I hope, we'll see. Okay, so now we'll go to smooth. I'll go to my brush. Just a couple of swipes through. And then I'll go back to my cylinder, turn my strength down a little bit. And I really want to just kind of round that. And what that does is if I turn that, you see that was just, you know, maybe a minute, two minutes, but that gives you some really nice root eminences. And then if you see something, you can just kind of fade that in a little bit. So as you can tell, there's some work there as opposed to completely flat here. And you're just going to use your uh, flowable material after that. A mo? So can, yep. Can you um, uh, talk about the default on the thickness, on the acrylic thickness uh, of the milled bases or, or um, print sure. from your side? Yeah. Yep. 
let me go back. Uh, let me go back to the main screen. So when I'm here designing this, um, you can set your minimum thickness here. However, you know, your minimal thickness of that base, you can set that whatever you whatever you feel comfortable with here. And the software will will um will make sure you don't go any any thinner than that. Also in the design, when I go back to the base here, um actually you know what I'll show I'll show when we do the single arch because we'd have to go we'd have to go back. I mean I could jump in. I can jump to that spot, but it'll, it's kind of when we're designing our denture base bottom, we can change the settings there as well. So I'll show it when we do uh, a single arch because it's the same steps. And on here, this is kind of a heat map showing me uh, where I'm getting thin according to what I set as my minimum. You see 0.5. So it, it, anywhere near there, it's starting to get starting to get thin over on the the blue is where it's thick so i got you know i got i got plenty but that's completely you know depending on and, and keep in mind where that is too you know what i mean if it's thin up here on a wall of course it's going to be thin around the border where it fades down so uh i'm not really where i'm not worried about it down here because that's traditionally where we will thin out those anyway but um that kind of gives you a little heat map of letting you know where you're thin So here is where Paul was talking about earlier, where we're, where we're creating uh, the. Well, let me start it, and I'll talk while it's doing this. We're creating the pocket gap um, of the. This, this is basically the relationship between the tooth and the base. So it's adapting right now to the teeth and these sockets that you can change this. Usually, I always tell everybody use default and change only if you want something different but we 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 our r d and vita's r d have already uh taken years to dial this in for you so it's it's not something and that's that's kind of where I, I like to i always like to interject when when the difference between a workflow and you creating something when you have a workflow it's it's you have r d backing you have people already going through the steps for you um you still can make adjustments but if you have a system that just says, oh, you're going to make a denture, we're going to produce two STLs and you print them or mill them, you're kind of working all those numbers on your own through trial and error. Uh, the trial and error has already been accomplished for you with, with, with uh, this system. And I've, you know, I've, I've the bonding, I, I don't want to, I don't want to step on your toes, Paul, because Paul's going to show the actual bonding process. Um, for those of you hesitant on that, I can tell you, I was a little hesitant until I did it myself and I, and I, you know, discovered how nice that that fit is plus the bond. And, and I, I even tried it out, tried to break the teeth off and couldn't, could not break the teeth out of the socket. So uh, I'm definitely a believer in the, in the process. Are almost, we're almost done with the adaptation. Um, Oh, let me have you. Let me have you answer another question. Um, okay. For an average user, once you get going, I mean, how long should they work with the design? I mean, you can you can work hours fooling around with the designs, but mm -hmm. realistically, with everything built into your system in your design software for the digital denture, uh, how long should somebody actually take to develop a, a denture? design it and, and get ready to produce it. Uh, oh, brand new, or you mean once they're comfortable, how long does uh, it generally take? Either one, both, uh, yeah. so you know. When I when I train customers, I tell them, I'm, I'm like, give yourself a couple of weeks. Don't compare how long it takes you the very first time like it does waxing. I said, because it's, it's like anything. The first time you waxed that denture, you weren't that fast. So I tell customers, compare this to the first time you tried to wax, you know what I mean? And, th and the difference is when, um, you know, when we talk analog, it's, it's not just directly how we design, 
how long it takes to design, how long it takes to wax. You have to factor in all the time that we are waiting on stone to set up. So if we're packing, just think about if we're packing dentures and 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 pressing them or injecting them. There's a lot of time that we're waiting on literally stone to set up and not doing anything else. With the digital, I'm, we just created a block out model. Uh, we've adapted the teeth to the base, you know, so that that part of it um, speeds up a lot. So you have some time built in to get faster on design um, and it's practice. I, I would say after about the fifth denture, you're probably pretty comfortable. But the main thing I always tell people is which way you want to do it. If you're going to do some work post milling or printing, then you don't need to spend a half hour of festooning digitally. You know what I mean? You leave it smooth, leave that canvas smooth, and then it's it's about how fast you can get with the flowable uh, materials afterwards. But I've had some customers that within a week or two, they're like, I, I, they're looking for different way, more ways they can use digital because it just takes out a lot. It's a lot of our time we're waiting, you know what I mean, on stuff to, to process. So I would say brand new, give yourself uh, at least a couple of weeks. If you have CAD CAM experience, what I just showed you right there, that, you know, that was literally about a minute, minute or two. Um, it's just finding that process and repeating it. I've done that enough times now where I don't even think about it. Um, and it, you'll you'll be that fast. So so um, yeah, a couple of weeks. Uh, but but still, give yourself time. Keep thinking of when you first wax dentures. That's the that's the accurate comparison. Is your first time because this is your first time digital. So um, yeah, a couple of weeks. Great. And then once they get going, it might take them 10 minutes to go through the workflow. Oh, yeah. Physically. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It's because right now, like for us, you know, our, our stone setting up is this right here. And and the reason why this is taking this long is because uh, I'm on my laptop. The the PC that comes with the system is probably twice as fast as this. So um, this would have been done already. It's just it's a lot of data. It's literally if you think about crown and bridge we have a margin that it's focused on right now this whole underside is a margin so it's doing the pocket as well as the base um of the denture so it's a lot of data a lot of data that's processing right now excellent um while we're on here i can go over i can show a little bit on the screen um on, on and how we how the tools we use oh, then it, now now it's ready <laughs> but you got so you guys see everybody saw this this here i just did you know a couple minutes we're, we're gonna pumice this polish it and it's ready to go uh on that uh in addition to that so our bases we mill wet if you've ever seen a denture mill dry compared to wet it's it's like night and day how smooth it is um you really can do a little bit of flour pumice and it's ready to polish. There's not a lot left to do when you're when you're milling these out. They come out so smooth. So if you add a, well, the next time we have a show, <laughs> um, just if you can see the difference between the two, um, it's, it's definitely an advantage milling these dentures wet. So on our software, let's, we'll go back to what we mean by workflow. So here, uh, I can generate a monoblock. So let and what monoblock all it means is it's going to merge the the teeth and the base into one STL. At that point, I can print that. I can mill that in wax um, for my try-in, and then bring that back in as a pre-op. Or if there's no adjustments or minimal adjustments, I can go right to um, right into milling. So what this does is now it's going to separate the two, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna go into the cam right now because I really want to show you the cam uh, with a single arch and a vionic. But on on this point here, I can either <clears throat> right, let me show, I'll turn the teeth off. So that's a separate STL, and I can send those off to mill or print, and then I have my 
Vigo T ready to go. Any questions before I go to single arch? Okay, so let's open up a single arch case. So this has our upper, this is gonna be an upper denture and you see antagonist here. And we're gonna pull this up on the screen. Um, okay. Uh, I think someone was asking earlier about the teeth, right? So let's. Um... Yeah, we had a couple of questions about the uh, transfer of digital data into this. Okay. And then also compatibility with a, a Facebook. Okay. So I'm going to hit, we'll do our, we'll redo the articulator. So in our system, we have what we call zebras. Um, I can take this uh, these settings and input. So there's two things. Our, our zebras does a digital face bowl as well as jaw motion. So I can load my digital face bowl and articulator settings right here. Um, let's say you're not even using our articulator. You're using, uh, I don't know. I won't, I won't bring up I won't I won't bring up competitors on here, but I'll show you that we have them on here. So we like I said, we provide everything, but we don't lock our customers in and force them to use what we have. We just we just make good stuff and hope hope they use it. But still, if you already have a different articulator, you can in, you can enter you can select this articulator and bring it in. Um, if you have our scanner, you can take um, we'll just I'll just pick one. Um, Let's say you have the uh, Stratus or SAM, you know, you have a SAM articulator. You, you can take your SAM articulator, scan it on our MAP 600, select whatever, whichever specific articulator you're using, and it will be here functional on the screen. So if you take a, let's say you take a custom guide table, you can put these numbers in. Um, if you have our Zebras, it automatically uh, adjusts the articulator settings and and those are those become now active functions in the software so right now we'll run it just so you can see it so it's saving those movements <clears throat> and now i have that function um in uh in in design so let's go back and you you know somebody asked for the face bow um so it's the same thing if i take a face bow and i mount it in our articulator as soon as i scan that articulator and i have that art virtual articulator i have my face bow positioning because it's 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 already mounted. It's going to copy that exactly uh, in the software. And so I'll zoom in here, and I can drag this through. There's my protrusion. So I can drag that through all of the functional movements, and it'll 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 I'll be able to eliminate any um, any interferences. So I'm going to intentionally have some interferences here because I want to be able to show you guys how the mill will take that away for us. Um, so let's, I'm going to move this just a little bit. Okay, there we go. I wanted something to show you guys that to make adjustments. Okay. 
Okay, so now is what I wanted to show you. So these are my contacts. Whoa, those are heavy. Let me back up for a second. I didn't want it to be that drastic. <laughs> so we're gonna, I'm gonna lift that up just a little bit. But if that's what it is, you know, in nature, that's what it is. So that's what we make. But um, for training purposes, we get to make we get to make adjustments. So uh, I'm gonna take away the antagonist. There's my contacts. Um, if I were in a system that's not a workflow, I have I'm gonna manually grind those. You know what I mean? I have to manually make those adjustments. Um, for us, I go right to adapt, and I tell it cut intersections. And it'll take that away. So that's a nice, really nice wear for set. Um, it'll take those away for me. And then the mill will actually mill that. So when that, when that, um, when those teeth come out, I have those movements already in the software. So now when I drag this through, you can actually see where that's writing. So that's another step where we're talking digital. I click, I click one button, and I've adjusted a, the entire arch. Um, here we go next. Did I answer that question? Okay, for uh, the person who had a question about inputting, bringing everything in. Yeah. Just want to make sure I'm clear on that. Yeah, it was Dr. Patel. I believe you did. If not, we can uh, he can send back our question again. Okay. All right. So now this kind of goes through the same um steps i'm going to show you you know for one it's kind of a cool feature in our software to kind of skip um this step right here so as you're designing what i'm going to do is skip over that long wait we had where we answered a bunch of questions in the last uh <laughs> the last design as you're going, you can save different points and 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 name it. So then, when I want to jump to a certain part, we're gonna we're gonna jump over because you guys are already seen designing of the base and then just waiting while it's there. So we'll go uh, straight to freeform. So this is really helpful when you're designing your dentures and and you're you're done for the day, but you don't want to start over or you don't have time to finish. You can pause right there. You can name it whatever step you were at last, and it will make those adjustments for you. So right here, I think somebody asked earlier about minimum thickness. I'm getting a warning right here. Um, I can freeform this. These colors always bother me, so I'm gonna to toggle that off. So once you get your base, it's back to that step of, Smoothing, adding, uh, whether you want to do some festooning yourself. And again, I'll show that again real quick. Just uh, or actually, you know, sometimes you see how this one's already already there. So maybe I just soften the smooth and flow in there a little bit and just take off the sharpness. So every update, this software of the gingiva gets a little better. But the main difference I wanted to show you is here. See these wear facets. Um, and if I wanted to, I could smooth those out. I just wanted to really show you the difference and show how um, the mill will make those adjustments for you. And adjust the base again. And now this, the difference here, we're gonna take this all the way to cam. So uh, Paul showed you guys a, a, a picture earlier. One of the slides had the teeth in the arm, um, in the holder, actually, on, on the mill. And that's where the two companies, we get together and, and work out a full process for our customers. So you're just going to snap the cards into the arm, um, and the mill already knows where it needs to make adjustments, whether that's on the basal surface, whether that's on the occlusal surface, it's going to make those adjustments for us. 
So while we're waiting, I got a couple of questions by William. Okay. Uh, what do you find is the most difficult while using this? Uh, I assume the, the the workflow, the design software. Um, so from a user's perspective, what what do you think is the most difficult? The most the most time consuming or difficult part is tooth placement. Um, making sure everything um, fits. So if I have my antagonist here, lining these up, because I, I you know when I used to wax up crowns. Um, the longest time it was taken to, to, is when I'm done, it's done. You know what I mean? You always want to play, you always want to move. And that's the same thing. Imagine a full arch. There's always little things that you can keep moving. That's about the most time consuming part or difficult part is, is knowing when you're done and when to go to the next step. Um, as far as pure difficulty, the software will walk you through every step uh, on the wizard. Uh, I'm going to show you, once this is done, I'll show you a real a cool feature on uh, our wizard. But I, I, like I said, it's it's knowing when you're done, knowing when to go to the next step. And that normally the longest part is lining your teeth up. Because sometimes when you, you'll see uh, it, there's an auto select, but it, it really proves that, you know, the computer is not ready to completely make that denture for us. It does a lot of things for us and takes away a lot of time. but Placing those teeth um, is not always in the ideal when they when the computer's thinking for us. <clears throat> Although your your Alma Gerbach uh, denture digital denture design module is, is pretty intuitive, it's very uh, very user friendly and uh, provides like you say it provides a lot of step by step and processes um, as close as they, it can get until you're ready to make some individualization of the denture, which is really nice. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's the thing. It, it's I, I tell when I'm training someone brand new, I, I always tell them to focus. You see on this wizard right here. I said it, it's nice that we give you the tools that you need to work on for that particular step. You know, there's other systems where there's 50 buttons up top, and the customer just has to know what button is what. And here, you just get to focus on, you know, what 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 you're doing. You know, exactly what you're doing. Um, I'm gonna go. I don't want to go. Yeah, let's see. So I'm gonna hit the question marks. I really wanna show you guys this. So it's a, a hotkeys F1, but every wizard step, if you hit that, it opens uh, our own like Wikipedia page. So it numbers each step and then tells you what, what each one means. Um, and that's through every single step of the way as you're going. So uh, that wizard, uh, the Wikipedia is a nice feature to, to use here for it. So let's look at this. We have our we have our antagonist. We have a single arch. So I'm gonna go. We're gonna go to uh, our cam. That'll be the last step is showing you the cam, and I'll turn it back over to Paul. And so right now, what it's doing is merging this to um one file so that grain right now is one file that i now can print or mill so let's go into proceed to production after it's finished merging Keep both. So that's saving everything that I've done automatically. But during the process, at any time, I can go over to the save button, right click, and click save as, and then I can name that any any step I'm doing at that time, and then uh, I can jump back into that spot. And that, that really saves a lot of time if you, you you decide, you know, later on in design, you want to change something. You don't have to go all the way back to the beginning. You can just hop right in where you where you need to make that adjustment. Uh, we'll, net, we'll bring everything over.
So remember, this step is the teeth. So, so uh, we're bringing in the teeth now. And I'm going to show you what needs to be adjusted. And this is another part where the machine does it for us. So let's bring in the orbit. So these are the teeth. <clears throat> you see the see the wear facets. So the mill already recognizes where it has to make adjustments. This is really cool here on the basal surface. If I zoom in here, you see this pink. Oh, a little too far. See the pink jagged line coming around. That is where the basal surface needs to be reduced. And you can actually see a shadow of where it's going to cut <clears throat> and the exact adjustment that's going to be made toward to each tooth. Some teeth don't need it if you have room, but then it's nice to know you don't have to think about it. You don't have to, you know, steam wax and grind, grind the bottom of those teeth. <clears throat> Not only that, let's clear this out of the way. I now have the STL created of the base that I can mill out. There's the sockets. So if you look in here, you can see that's where we were approaching minimum thickness. So that's where the software automatically knows, okay, oh, we got to adjust the tooth and not the base to keep that minimum thickness threshold. So that's where digital, I mean, it's just, it's all automated for us. There's no measuring. It digitally measures all that out. And then we're ready um, to process. And if you notice, if you remember this one, I didn't even, I didn't touch. You know what I mean? I didn't make any adjustments. And the the, the denture looks pretty good, especially if I'm going to add a little bit of characterization afterwards. And let's look at the other one. This is our monoblock. So this unit here, I would see the Vita Vionic. I would pick the Vita Vionic, use blank now. And it would place it in the puck and I could i would be ready to start nesting this, positioning my connectors and milling that in wax. But again, we like I said, we, we give you all the tools, you pick what works best. If you wanted to send this to the printer and print this, you can send that to the printer and print that as an STL for your try-in. Any questions? Uh, the last one that we have on this section was, um, does this software, I assume, or the integration, does it have eyes in picture layout capability? I'm not sure what that means, but it must be a software program. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I, I couldn't understand. They said eyes or iOS? The eyes or? as in your eye. Yeah, as in your scene eyes. Eyes in picture layout capability. So integration of pictures, maybe integration of, uh, I'm not sure, but William, William yeah. can try to elaborate on that as well. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, if we can pull up the, uh, uh, towards the end, if we can pull up, if they, if they can get my email, they can always, anybody, they can yeah. contact me afterwards and we can, you know, have a conversation one on one to make sure we, we're completely on the same page. You know what I mean? So. All right. Okay. We ready for Paul? Yep. All right. And then uh, if everyone can, um, you know, any questions that you have, uh, please start, uh, you know, sending in some questions. Uh, and Paul, if you're ready, we've got your screen up and we can uh, continue with the functional use of, of the, uh, the actual process flow of the, uh, the milled out dentures or uh, printed dentures. Awesome. Yeah. So thanks, Mo. That was that was terrific. So I'm going to show you guys kind of what this looks like when it comes out of the mill and then how to finish it. Uh, I'll come back to this in a second, but I wanted to go back to the teeth 
uh, we were talking about the, the, the Vigo teeth, which is essentially our carded teeth. Uh, they come in a blister pack like this. Uh, and again, they're, they're uh, pre-sandblasted, pre-cleaned, ready to glue in. The, uh, the DD frame teeth come in the card uh, suspended in wax. And this is what it looks like on the bottom before it's been milled. And then this is an example of what it looks like after it's been milled. So it cuts it out and removes the area just like Mo was showing you, uh, you know, where it needs to to make sure that it's going to fit that uh, that unit properly. And the, the base, again, comes out looking like this. And that looks almost exactly like what Mo was showing you in, his, uh, in the software there. Uh, once it's cut out, and this one I have uh, started on, um, you know, Mo is, is absolutely right. However you like to do the gingiva is totally up to you. Uh, I like to do mine in the software. Uh, you can see I've added quite a bit there. Um, and, you know, so one of the options is to simply, like you said, just polish it, which is all I've done on this side. And you can see I just polished it, glued the teeth in, and for the most part, it's ready to go. So for an immediate denture or something like that, that's a very quick and easy. Now, if you want to uh, do something with more characterization, um, you know, I'll go into the, the VMLC uh, in a minute. So the, the first part here is going to be this side. Now the only thing I've done to, to prepare this is I've sandblasted these tooth pockets. Okay. Uh, and that is ready to go. So to bond in, we're going to use our uh, bionic bond kit. And the kit comes with this two part, um, uh, uh, they're both liquid solutions. And you simply open them up, pour one into the other, and stir for about 30 seconds. Now, the other thing that I like to do too is now you guys can see here you can actually open these up one at a time so you don't end up spilling all the teeth out which i think is really cool uh, and i usually will go in and pre-fit the teeth just to make sure that everything is fitting in the pocket so you guys can see and this is an example too of what we were talking about before of you know that 20 micron gap that you see how well that fits without you know any movement or any ambiguity there. There's no movement. It doesn't rock, rotate. It fits very nice and snug. So once we're done mixing this up, we're going to use our brush here. And we just want to make it wet. We don't want any excessive liquid in there. Uh, this is not intended to be gap filling. So we're going to wet that. We're going to wet this tooth. And then we're going to place it in there and we're going to hold it down firm for about eight or ten seconds. And that will allow that glue to get kind of tacky and that tooth to kind of stick in there. So what I usually do while I'm holding that in and waiting for it to kind of get tacky is I'll move on to the next one. And I, again, I will just wet it. A little bit on the tooth here. and drop it in. And again, hold it for about eight or 10 seconds so that it gets tacky and will stay in there. And then we can move on to the rest of the teeth. Now, 
I'm going to kind of jump ahead and uh, show you guys how we can uh, finish this with the VMLC. Uh, Paul, before you go there, um, there's a question by David. Uh, do you need to sandblast or can you grind? Uh, well, if you grind, then you're going to change the shape of the tooth pocket and you're not going to have that precision. Uh, again, this, this glue is meant to be exactly that, a glue, and we're working with a 20 micron gap. That's going to give us the precision um, that if we grind it, then we're going to be changing all of that. Our teeth are going to move. Um, you know, again, it's not meant to be gap filling, so I would not grind it. I would just sandblast it. Uh, so for our VMLC here, I've got our window, which is clear. A little of that there. And we've got our gingiva, and there's five shades in the gingiva. You can use whatever works best for you. Window. And here is some of our modeling liquid. So if we need to you know, thin it out a little bit, can. So in the example it showed uh, in one of the slides, you know, you can use some of the, the pink. To fill in any micro gaps that you might have in here. Again, to make it look however you need it to look best for yours. Uh, the step I definitely recommend though is the using the window. fill in the interproximals here and just enough so that it will kind of wick into that gap and seal up the interproximals. Just like that if you guys can see it. Now, if you want to get even more creative, uh, like I said, there are several gingiva colors. We have a paint kit, and you know you can do as much characterization as you want. Here, I've used several different colors of um, the gingiva as well as some of our paint kits to give it some more characterization. Uh, this is another example of one that I was working on yesterday morning. Um, and then the other piece that we have is our uh, gel. So once we've got our VMLC where we want it, then we would use it, put it in the light carrying machine. And the gel will just simply cover it um, and help prevent uh, oxidiza oxid oxidization. And um, it'll come out. It won't get that kind of a, a you know, chalky or, or milky film over the top of it. Uh, it'll come out more clear uh, during the, the light curing process. And then when you're done, you simply wash that gel off. And so those are some of the different ways that we can finish this denture. Uh, here is an example also of that monoblock that has been milled out of wax. You guys can see that. That you can use as your try-in. So this is just another example of what uh, uh, Mo was showing you. Now I've already ground off the, the sprues and cleaned it up a little bit, but that's essentially how it's going to come out. So that is basically how you're going to finish this denture. Um, what, uh, I guess questions on that process. It's just uh, sandblasting yeah, those two sprues. Sorry, go ahead. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, so, um, the William also has a follow-up question. Uh, do we need to use a primer uh, before this application? 
and I assume the the VMLC application or and or the uh, the Bionic bond. Is there a primer necessary? Uh, no primer necessary. You do want to uh, you know prepare the surface. So like I said, for the for the tooth pockets, you want to make sure that you sandblast the tooth pockets. And uh, for the VMLC, there is no primer, but Again, if you uh, rough up the the surface slightly so that you know it has something to grab onto, then it usually will uh, stick a little bit better than going directly to a smooth surface. All right, and then uh, uh, Maurice, this might be also a question for you between you and Paul. Uh, maybe you can help answer this. Um, is there uh, any estimate? What's the average cost of, the, of a, a full denture uh, system? Does anybody uh, want to tackle that? An approximate cost of say uh, one arch it, it, denture. Yeah, I think I think Paul, we both can combine on that. So on the on the base, it just really depends on your base material that you're going to use to mill, or whether you're going to print the teeth um, from the slide earlier. Paul, wasn't it like forty nine and sixty nine are two of the prices? For the um, for the arches per arch, is that correct right. for the Vigo teeth? Yeah, roughly. I think a lot of it is going to depend on yeah how you're how you're producing it and and how much uh, uh, you know effort you're putting into it. Again, if you mill it versus print it, um, and and again how you're calculating your cost if you're including time and labor in there. Uh, certainly, if uh, you know you print it, it's going to be much faster than if you mill it. Uh, or if you go through and do a lot of the characterization, like I did, that's going to take a lot more bench time and a lot more uh, you know labor time than than if you just glue in the teeth and send it out. So it kind of depends on what you how you calculate it. Uh, but you know, either way, it still comes out to be uh, quite a bit cheaper both time and money-wise than, than our traditional process. You know, what do you think, Mo? No, exactly, because uh, just thinking of all, all the things we need, the flask, the stone, uh, the boil out, all those things that we're eliminating from the process, um, as well as, like you said, Paul, time is huge. What I've, what I've done with a lot of customers, and I, I, I'll, I'll ask them, what, what are you charging for your dentures? what do you want to charge do you want to have you know maybe different tiers and then you match that process to go with it because if somebody told me oh, i want the cheapest one i can you know dentures i can make then that would you know you'd print a lot of stuff but then you wouldn't it would look like what you spend you know honest basically um having the teeth milling the base is probably your is, is your most aesthetic and long lasting because it's milling out of a solid puck versus uh light curing something as well as just the nature of that that material is going to last longer so there's there's a lot of factors it, it's more i i would i would i usually talk to customers one-on-one -on -one and say okay what are you charging what do you want to charge here's the process that would fit you know economically into that structure yeah and, and the right. thing i'd like to add to that you know is that you know, you kind of uh, alluded to it earlier, uh, and one of the, the features that I like to point out is is really what we're offering here is versatility. Um, that we want to, this to be, uh, you know, available to anybody to use however they need it to. Like I said, you can uh, you do wax, you can do acrylic, you can mill it, you can print it, you can do the DBT, or you can do the Vigo teeth, and any combination there. Uh, so uh, really the versatility on how you're going to adapt this and use it is going to be specific to your your needs and your customers and then you know as far as pricing wise goes yeah you know you just price it appropriately so gentlemen is there uh, material that we would repair or reline the, the mill dentures or resin denture uh, at the end of the day the pucks are pure acrylic so it's treated the same way as a regular denture. Um, <clears throat> it'll it'll bond. It'll 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 you know that's why I tell everybody it's just it's just a perfectly made acrylic when you have the acrylic puck. Um, so you, what you use before will still work with with uh, with these materials. 
right? Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, we're talking about, yeah, denture teeth and denture pucks, exactly how you would do it. Um, as far as repairing them goes, uh, you know, you would have to, you know, calculate it out. But my personal opinion is, is it's probably faster and cheaper to just make a new one than it is to try and repair one. Uh, but you certainly can in the way that you're used to doing it. Uh, as far as the teeth, because the bond works so well, you're not going to have any teeth that are delaminating or popping out. They will break long before uh, they will ever pop out of the sockets. But if you have one that breaks, you need to replace it. You can always use uh, an Excel tooth um, out of a carded kit that you already have or, uh, you know, another either Vigo tooth that you can kind of grind to fit. And then Mo is a uh, question from David or, or Paul, either one. Um, is there an auto festooning option? Not yet. It, it it has gotten a lot better. If you guys remember the last one I just did, the festooning has really uh, improved uh, each each update. Um, but for as far as auto, no. It it'll it'll try to do it. It's still a computer. It'll it it knows the general area where these teeth are, and it'll create a root eminence. But as you guys saw, it, with it, within a couple of weeks, and within after a couple minutes, you'll be able to make your own festooning. Nice. Now, one thing one thing I've noticed, Mo, and and maybe you can speak to this is is that uh, I found that um, for some of the festooning, the the look that I'm looking for, uh, I oftentimes have to over exaggerate it slightly in the software because of uh, you know some of the milling limitations and the angles. Uh, it comes out kind of muted. Uh, are you noticing anything like that, or what's your recommendation? Uh, it really in the net, I look at it here. So I'm, oh, wait, my screen's not. Let me, uh, can I show my screen for a second? Yes. Yeah, I mean, switch it over. Okay, you're on. Okay. So these angles. That's my screen. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, no, I got Maurice's the presenter. There, there you go. go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so. These numbers basically tell how difficult it is for the mill to get in position to mill what it needs to mill, basically. Um, so if these numbers are really high, there's not a lot of room, and you you it will there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But if you can see here, these are ones like one degree, so it won't really have a problem to get to what I what I need. Now, areas where I put connectors could add some problems, but other than that um it's it's i've had i've had it milled basically where what i put um if i really wanted something sharp yeah i would add i would add, i would accentuate a little more because at the end of the day if i'm still gonna pumice and polish this a little bit i want a little bit to uh i don't want to i don't want to be able to polish that all the way down to where it's flat so um but nesting that's bringing in nesting and that's part of our training too as well so when we train customers we go all the way through uh start to finish with them on the entire process and that is that's a good point though that's one of the things you want to look at is um how difficult it'll be to mill this one of the one thing not that i know we're, we're running long but i wanted to show on here uh to kind of compensate if you run into a issue like that i could increase the material space um and that will give the mill a little more room on the offset um to be able to get to where it needs to be. But here, like this one, I wouldn't have any problems uh, being able to mill that out. Actually, that's the wrong one. It would be the, uh, it would be that one. So similar, you see there's not, a, there's not any problems that will be able to mill that out. Okay, that's all, that's all I've got. Uh, right, so our friend, uh, well, you were fine. We'll just leave it right here. But uh, our friend Brian uh, does uh, remind something uh, to consider that on the the pox, the uh, the disc pre-made uh, manufactured uh, bases, um, they're basically uh, monomer-free uh, compared to like a, a printed model or an analog processing. So. 
Um, you guys want to elaborate on that? That uh, you know they're manufactured by the uh, in, in a factory, and all that residual monomer is removed. Exactly. That's a great point. Um, it, the, with, without any monomer, you're not dealing with shrinkage. You're not dealing with processing errors. You're not dealing with porosity. Um, these are, it's basically cutting what it needs and it's ready to go. Um, so the minor processing errors we see sometimes with injecting or packing and, and heat curing, uh, the, all, those, all those issues are removed um, because it's milled. We're just milling it solid straight from the manufacturer. That sounds like my coworker, Brian. Is that Brian Lee? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so That's William great. has a, kind of a process uh, question on okay. uh, buffing, finishing, uh, the denture. You know, is that just regular, uh, you know, pumice um, and, and polishing compound? And it, if there is a, a recommendation on any particular polishing compound. So <clears throat> I, uh, I'll let Paul speak on this too because Paul's got – probably a ton of it, you know, just a ton of experience on here. When these come out of the mill, wet milled, um, you you will not, you have to see it to believe it. It really is smooth. Uh, you can usually get away with, after you finish the connector areas, um, flower pumice and then whatever acrylic polish you prefer. Um, but Paul, I'll let you, I'll let you speak on that, on the polish. If you guys, if you guys yeah. have a special. No, you're. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The 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 finish out of the mill is is you know so nice. It's it's almost smooth. It's not quite shiny, but it's very smooth and takes very little to uh, polish it. And that's why I'm a big fan of of adding that festooning digitally, so that when it does come out, all I have to do is grind off the sprues, you know, hit it with the you know if if I do any polishing, uh, it's very light. Usually I just hit it with the high shine buff wheel and it's it's good to go. Uh, there, you know, depending on on how you're doing it and how much characterization, some of the different uh, techniques I've tried is uh, uh, sometimes I will actually polish it before I glue the teeth in, so that way I don't risk uh, polishing off any of the anatomy of the tooth itself, uh, since these are really nice teeth and got a lot of really nice surface texture. Um, yeah, it. It comes out really well, but however you're used to polishing, just like the repair, that at the end of the day we're talking about it's a denture, denture acrylic and and denture teeth. It'll it'll polish and and act just like you're you're used to. All right, so Leah has a um, hopefully I get this correct, Leah, that uh, she has a question on Mo what you were going over on this nesting. Um, She's asking, when is it a definite no number uh, to watch out for uh, to mill? So I assume she's talking about the your your numbers here on your nesting oh, image yeah. currently. So it'll go up to uh, 29 degrees before it turns red. Um, you, it, I would, it, it would have to be a really strange denture to have that wild of a degree uh you see it more in implants but it would let me see let me move it real quick um it would it would have to be a really strange path of insertion to even i'm trying to tilt it right now just to so you see what i mean this it it, it would You'd rarely run across something like that. That path would have to be that tilted, and it's still in your in your mid-teens for most of the dentures. Uh, that's pretty good. You see what I mean? So it, it has it has plenty of room to um, be able to be able to mill what it needs to mill. And then a price. I don't know if you want to handle this, uh, Mo. Uh, what what is the price for the licensing? I know you guys do go through uh, dealers and so forth, and that might yeah. vary. But uh, I'll, I'll give kind of general um, because it is we we're the manufacturer, but we we go through distributors, and there's a so we're Exocad based. So Exocad has it's it's like a fifteen hundred dollar a year 
ExoCAD license. And then what we have is different modules that we custom uh, build. Um, let me bring, I'll bring it up real quick and you'll see. So it <clears throat> it is, it lets our customer build exactly what they need for their system. Uh, what, what I love about ExoCAD is um, whether I have one module or 10, it's the same price that you're paying your distributor a year. You're not paying per module or extra for different modules. So for my module right here, of course, as a trainer, I got all the modules, but you may only need four, but you would pay your annual fee, whatever the distributor, anywhere from 15 to 2000. Um, but whatever that fee is, it's one fee a year. And if you add five more modules the next year, it's still the same price. You don't pay, you don't pay for additional, um, or you pay for additional modules, but you don't pay yearly for all your modules. So for example, what I used today was the Artex module. Um, and I used uh, D-Flow, which is the denture module, and then True Smile, which kind of gives the color for the teeth. All right. So we, we're still getting a lot of a few questions on the, on the pricing of, uh, of uh, a digital denture. Um, you know, I, I, from my, my two cents is that the, um, a lot of labs are trying to sell their digital denture about the same uh, price as their premium denture so yeah. that they can start converting their customers into into a digital denture digital, scenario yeah. to, to save themselves money. Yeah. Uh, what's Paul, Mo, what's your feeling on that? Yeah, it, it absolutely. So let, we can, let's, let's throw a ballpark. So you, if you look at an acrylic puck, um, 30 millimeter acrylic puck, let's, let's say $60, right? And then your teeth, um, I can't, I, I don't have the slide that you guys had up there, but weren't they round about 50, would you say average 50 for the Vigo and Vionic, kind of the happy medium between the two? Because I saw some $40 and I saw a couple that were 60. Is that, am I in the right ballpark, Paul? Uh, I think so. I'm actually I'm looking right now to see if I have a slide that kind of has the um the pre yeah I saw one earlier that you pulled up. Yeah, you had some you had the uh, first of the individual. I had it one time. Yeah, give me Yeah, in your in your program Paul, um there was that slide with the gray grid um table. So I I turned it over to you if you want to put your your slides back up. There we go. Yeah. It's got the, the teeth, the frame. Uh, does this have these denton pucks? I guess it doesn't have the, the pucks on there. But that's the, you know, those are your average costs. I used to, ha I used to have a, a breakdown or analysis or a comparison of, um, of exactly, you know, compared to, um, what a traditional denture costs. Uh, the the impression that I have from most people that are doing this is they're they're pricing them very similar to what they have been used to pricing their dentures. Uh, the difference is is they have a much bit better margin on it, so they're making more money on it, uh, but not necessarily charging any more or less for the denture than they're used to, because their labor and their uh, uh, material cost is is quite a bit lower. Definitely materials, because I'm I can think about all the things that we we need for uh, traditional denture. You know, all the steps, all the materials, uh, just to get to what we're doing when we put that in the in the mill to mill. All right, so that's it for the for the questions. Uh, those of you that are still hanging on, I sorry, you know, we we went a little late, but you know, between Paul and uh, and Mo. We've got a lot of information, uh, a lot of good uh, information about getting into the digital dental, digital uh, denture, um, and start fabricating, start using, uh, getting yourself involved with as well. Um, so the, again, the video itself, the webinar is going to be turned into a video form. 
Uh, we'll have it on our Vita North America site. Uh, Amon Gerbach will also post it on their um, on their YouTube channel. Um, on the CE, remember, you will be able to uh, ask for CE on this follow-up. You'll get an email from uh, from Vita North America and then a link to go ahead and um, submit your information to receive um, your CE. So please fill that out, and get it to us, and then we'll give you the the uh, uh, the CE uh, through NBC. If you're a dentist, go ahead and and fill that out as well, and we'll get you a letter uh, for the CE hour. Uh, again, thank you again for everyone for joining. Let's get digital with Digital Dentures with uh, Mo Maurice Whitlock and uh, Paul Richardson. Uh, we were also asked uh, about the their email addresses, so they're on the screen right now. So those of you who have any further questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact them. I'll leave this uh, screen on for a bit. Um, and then if you have any follow-up questions, any, maybe you want uh, one of the two uh, trainers to elaborate on, please please get a hold of them and then ask them um, uh, you know, whatever question you may have. So uh, if everyone's fine, that looks like just about it for the questions. This will end the uh, the webinar. Uh, Paul, uh, Mo, do you have any last, last comments? No, oh, I just want to thank you so everybody. much for having oh, us. Sorry, Paul. Yeah, that's, no. that's it. Just want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, had a good time. All right. So thank you guys very much for your uh, well- uh, anticipated uh, webinar with uh, all that great information. So uh, this will conclude the uh, the webinar of Let's Get Digital with Digital Dentures. Everyone have a, a great day wherever you may be. Thanks.